What's up guys? Today I was originally going to take a look at the brand new CRS100 blaster from Zenway. However, mine happened to ship without any catch springs. Plus, I've got some upgrades coming for it, so I figured I'd delay that video until they arrive. I will actually be using the CRS100 today to test something else though, because surprisingly, without any catch springs, this blaster still works flawlessly simply due to gravity. So what I'll be testing today is a brand new kind of Nerf rifling attachment. Traditionally in Nerf, we use a device called a scar barrel to impart spin on the darts as it leaves the barrel. The S in the name scar barrel stands for string, which is usually just some fishing line. Now string works completely fine at high velocities such as 300 FPS, However, at lower velocities, you start to lose a fair amount of velocity due to the friction of the dart to the string. This is where a brand new kind of rifling comes in. The upcoming Challenger Mark III AEG blaster will ship with a device that uses rotating bearings to impart spin on the darts rather than string. A company called Flag and Armor have already taken that idea and copied it, producing what I have here. They're selling these currently on their Taobao store, which I'll put a link to down below. Now, this was actually sent to me by a Singapore-based nerfer Piggy SG, and the total cost, including shipping it to him and then shipping it to me, was 32 Singapore dollars, which is about 23 USD. I also checked with the online retailer Monkey Mods, and Monkey Mods will be stocking these bearing scars very soon as well. So you'll actually be able to save some money with my 5% coupon code BRAD at checkout, and you won't have to use a Chinese website. You can use the English website, Monkey Mods. It's actually the same if you want one of these blasters as well. Now, the bearings on this device are set up in groups of three in three different positions around the outside of the device. This particular one I have here has a 10 degree angle from straight, but Flag and Armor also have a 5 degree and 15 degree on their Taobao store. So you'll be able to use that 5 degree if you want to experiment with less spin, and 15 degree if you want to experiment with more spin than this one. I'll also just quickly mention the one that they've copied that's coming with the Challenger Mark III AEG from QWK is actually an 8 degree angle on theirs. So it's completely different than the three that Flag and Armor are selling. The outer shell is very heavy duty for what it is. Resin printed, so it's a very smooth finish compared to what you'd normally expect from 3D prints. In fact, I originally thought it was CNC Delrin. It's suited for 16mm outer diameter barrels, which are pretty much the standard in the Nerf hobby besides brass barrels. And it's very easy to attach and remove, striking a good balance of not being too tight you can't get it off again, thanks to some raised ridges inside of it. It also stays on there nice and tight, so that when you're shooting it's not going to fly off. Now, there's only so much I can say about a tiny little muzzle device that goes on the end of your barrel. So now let's head outside and actually test it on the CRS100 here against a worker 90 degree string scar barrel. I'm going to be using the strongest spring that comes with the CRS100, which is a 14 kilo equivalent spring. They call it a 2.0 spring. But I'm also going to be using the brand new worker darts. First up, I'll use this chronograph here to check velocity. First with no attachment, then the string scar, and then the bearing scar to see how much they reduce velocity by each. Baseline, no attachment with worker darts, got a high of 292, low of 276, and an average of 285. Now the string scar. It looks like the worker 90 degree string scar actually increased the velocity due to it adding additional barrel length to the blaster, which was obviously over-volumed for the barrel. But it got a high of 293, low of 282, and an average of 288. Now let's try the bearing scar.
The bearing scar being a looser fit inside didn't increase the effective barrel length, but it did only drop velocity by 4 FPS on average. Got a high of 292, low of 261, and an average of 281. Now, because these results didn't really show whether the bearing scar has lower friction than the string scar, when I got home, I decided to do some further testing with weaker springs in the CRS100. With its weakest spring, the 1.2 or 3.5 kilo spring, the CRS100 shot an average of 88 feet per second. With the worker string scar attached, that dropped dramatically to only 21 FPS on average, and it had multiple shots not actually leave the barrel at all. With the bearing scar attached, the average was 75 FPS, and every single shot fired. So at stock elite velocities, you can actually use the bearing scar, and it only drops FPS by 15%. This should get some HVZ players excited and possibly even some flywheelers who want to experiment with this. I also tested it with the CRS 100's 1.5 spring or 6 kilo equivalent. No attachment, average 197 feet per second. String, average 169 feet per second. And bearing, average 194 feet per second. So at those ultra stock levels of performance, around 200 FPS, and also earlier when we checked it at 290 FPS, it's only losing 1.5% with the bearing scar, so basically nothing. Now let's head outside and compare the bearing scar and the string scar and no scar for accuracy. The target is 30 meters away and has a diameter of one meter. As hilariously inaccurate as it'll be, I'm gonna start with no attachment so you can see how big a difference a scar barrel makes at 290 feet per second. As predicted, the blaster can't hit the broadside of a barn without a scar barrel. Of 10 shots fired, only 8 impacted within the camera's frame, and of those 8, only 2 actually hit the target. Now for the worker 90 degree string scar barrel.
a night and day difference. Every shot hit the target. Now for the bearing scar. So the bearing scar actually works. Every shot hit the target. Not only did it work, but if I center and compare both the string scar and the bearing scar, the bearing scar actually had a slight edge in accuracy. So what have we learned? Well, the bearing scar definitely has much less friction to it than a string based scar. Could even use it at stock elite velocities if you really wanted to and possibly even on flywheel blasters. Around the 200 FPS range, it only dropped velocity by 1.5% on average, and at the 290 FPS range, it only dropped velocity by 1.4%. Those amounts are so low that I'd call it no loss at all, especially compared to the accuracy gains. If you want to buy one of these and try it out yourself, check out the Taobao link down below for a 5 degree, 15 degree, or this version, the 10 degree that I tested. Also keep an eye out for Monkey Mods, who's going to be getting these in on an English site. Also please keep in mind they have copied QWK, who are doing an 8 degree version of these. So if you're kind of morally against that kind of thing, maybe wait for the Challenger Mark III to come out with its own scar barrel. I hope you've enjoyed this video comparing the new bearing type of scar barrels against the traditional fishing line ones. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and maybe even leave some feedback with the form of a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.